we were just talking about the Dirichlet categorical model and um, so we wrote down what that meant and then we saw that the likelihood function and the the prior looked very similar and so when we multiplied them together the exponents just added and we got that the posterior distribution on theta was also a Dirichlet and that implied that Dirichlet is, conjugate, is a conjugate prior for the categorical. So we had this nice nice formula here to, 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 to display that, to remember that. And then we were looking at this predictive distribution on x given the data. And things went kind of fast here at the end, so I want to explain what happened here. So in general, whenever we have a Dirichlet, maybe I'll have to do a video on Dirichlet distribution to explain all this in more detail. But when we have a Dirichlet distribution, let's say eta is a random variable distributed according to a Dirichlet with parameter beta. So this is just some new thing here. And so beta is, let's say, it has it's beta 1. We'll make it m again, up to beta m. So these are these betas are strictly positive for a Dirichlet distribution. And the expected value of eta sub i, i1, under this distribution is equal to beta i divided by the sum of all the betas. So let's call that beta zero. So we'll define We'll define beta 0 to be the sum as i goes from 1 to m of beta i. And this is just a this is just an expression for the what well, we'll prove this, maybe we can prove this in another video. This is just the expression for the expected value of the ith coordinate. Remember, this is a vector here. This eta is a vector. It's a probab it's a probability distribution on 1 to m. Oops. 1 to m. Each of these is non-negative and sums to 1, and they sum to 1. So a Dirichlet distribution is a probability distribution over probability distributions. So, so that's a, have, have to get your head wrapped around that a little bit. Not over arbitrary probability distributions, distributions, it's over the, you know, these, the PMFs on 1 through m, in this case, m. And so this is just the expression for the expected value of the ith coordinate of that function. And what we did here when we were deriving this predictive distribution was we had the expected value of x uh, of theta x, which is the x coordinate of the theta vector here, and it's the expected value under the it's expected value given d. So this is the expected value under the posterior distribution on theta. That's what this is saying. And the posterior distribution we saw is a Dirichlet with parameter c plus alpha. So the expected value of theta under this, or of theta x under this posterior distribution, we can just use this formula here. And the parameter for the posterior distribution, if we called it beta, so if we called beta c plus alpha, then the expected value of the x coordinate is beta x over beta 0, which is just this right here, cx plus alpha x over the sum of the betas in this case is n plus alpha zero, where alpha zero is this this sum. N is the sum of all the c's because if we sum all the counts up, so if we sum this over over j, then each xi has to be equal to some j, so so this is just n. You can check that in more detail. That wasn't clear. All right, so I just wanted to explain a little bit more how, you know, where this last step, you know, how, how this came about.
Oh, and one other thing I wanted to mention here is that a way to remember this formula, besides the fact that it's the mean of the of the that coordinate of the posterior of the Dirichlet, is you can think about you know if the you know if you ignore if you ignore these these alphas here, then this would just be the empirical distribution, or it would be the empirical probability that x that the new random x oops, takes that value little x. It would be the empirical probability because that's the number of times we observed little x divided by the total number of points. And so these alphas here, so this is a count vector. These alphas are sometimes referred to as pseudo counts because they behave like counts that you know if you had observed some counts before getting your data, then you would of course just add them. They don't have to be integers, but but you can you can you can remember this by thinking of these alpha parameters in your Dirichlet prior as these sort of pseudo counts, and then and then under that interpretation, this is just a sort of very natural thing as the as a sort of empirical probability. So that's just an easy way to remember it.